Welcome everyone to the Families Help Families webinar, why we have individualized education program, also known as IEP meetings. Um, with me today, we have Melinda Elliott from Families Help Families, and I'm Wallace Johnson, and all lines are muted. So if you have a question for Melinda Elliott, please use the chat box and we'll be monitoring the chat box for questions. And at the end of the webinar, we will email you the PowerPoint. We'll email that out to all the attendees. Um, and with that said, I'll turn it over to Melinda Elliott. Oh, by the way, this is being recorded. Oh, great. Thank, Thank you, Melinda. Thank you, Wallace. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Great. Um, there's going to be an evaluation after this, so y'all don't forget our evaluation. Um, my name is Melinda Elliott. Um, I am one of the education specialists at Families Helping Families. Um, there's me, Beryl, and Wallace to help you with your education, um, special education, education needs. Um, I have five children. They're all grown. Um, but two of them had IEPs, and I have grandkids with IEP meetings, so I'm still going to IEP meetings for um, family members. Um, so I have some personal knowledge of this, um, as well as over 20 years experience doing this. I think one of the questions that I get from parents, um, or one of the comments that I get from parents is um, that they hate going to IEP meetings. Um, so this workshop was in part developed um, to answer this or answer that question. Why well, have education, individualized education program meetings? IEP stands for individualized education program. Sometimes we get so um, busy using um, acronyms that we forget to um, say the words so if y'all see me doing that y'all type something in the chat box and remind me to say the words um but i'm so glad everybody's here um the first thing that we're going to do is um do an overview of the iep um and um an iep um was designed to aim high for all students um, the IDEA, the law that governs special education, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Improvement Act, is about success for children and youth with dis disabilities. Um, it's important to um, ensure each child is held to high expectations and given the opportunities to learn skills and knowledge um, essential to their success in their adult life. Um, whatever that, um, whatever they choose that to be, that look like for them. The individualized education plan or the IEP is one key element for helping students be successful. Um, and I, a good IEP is like a roadmap towards success. We want to develop knowledge and skills for creating IEPs for students to be successful in careers, college, and life. So I want to go over, or I hope to answer four major questions today. Um, why have an IEP? Why have an IEP team? Why have an IEP meeting? And what do you need to um, know, do, um, to prepare for that IEP meeting? Um, so, um, we're going to get started with the purpose of the IEP. Um, I'm going to go through each one of these at some point. Um, the steps in the IEP process, the IEP team roles and responsibilities, qualities of an IEP, and prepare, how to prepare for the IEP. So, in answer to the question, why have an IEP? Um, the, you have an IEP to ensure educational benefit for the student. Um, we know it's required by law, or most everybody that's come in contact with our agency 
knows it's required by law, but it's a whole lot more than that. Um, the IEP is the program, the plan, the roadmap to the future for a student with disabilities. Um, ultimately, we want all students to make progress in the general education curriculum. The IEP is important to support and enable the student with a disability to achieve that outcome. Almost everything that I talk about, and especially these um, slides that have this um, numbers and letters at the bottom come directly from the law. So um, you could go to IDEA and go to that specific place to look at this quote if you wanted to. So what's the meaning of educational benefit? Um, Congress recognized that improving educational outcomes for students with disabilities should be a national imperative. Um, some of the things from this um, exact wordage are in um, IDEA. Um, I want to go back to that roadmap concept um, so that you can like have a, a, a visual for thinking about it. So the roadmap provides an image of something in real life um, that at least people my age, I don't know that people see roadmaps the same way that I did. We had these big pieces of paper that you would fold and unfold to be able to get places. Now, um, most people do it on um, online, but you can still see a map online of how to get from here to there as well as it shows you the words. But um, a map is something people, everybody's familiar with. Um, when you use a map, when you do mapping, the direction or the route to get someplace, um, you know, that's how you plan. That's part of good planning. Um, and maybe you don't do it all at once. Um, you do it in steps, in stages, from this town to that time, town, particularly if you're going a long distance, or from this state to that state. Um, that, um, you know, sort of like in chunks. Um, even though you're going to one destination, there's more than one way to get there. Um, you might go this way, you might go that way, um, but you're going to get to that destination. Um, a new goal doesn't necessarily have to be totally new and different, but it could be. Um, sometimes your goal, particularly in your roadmap, in your IEP, um, might be expanded or revised based on information that the student and the family gathers along the way. Um, so uh, if I'm a student, I might be interested in that. And as I learn more about that, I might not be so much interested in that. Um, but you know, you, you know where you want to go or you know where you think you want to go. You gather data along the way and um, you know where you are. So you start going in that direction. Um, sometimes opportunities arise that you don't know are coming. You know, sometimes barriers arise that you didn't anticipate and you adjust. Um, when you get to that first stage, maybe like in a physical roadmap going to a different destination, maybe we, when you get through the state or part of the state, you might have to adjust your direction, um, but, um, or, or, or you might decide that you're, that, that this isn't working and go someplace else. Um, you can choose something different. So, what, what kind of outcomes concerning educational benefit should families expect, um, students expect, teachers expect? Um, so, one of those things is um, 
where you're headed, what kind, uh, what, um, uh, what kind of steps you're going to go through. Um, uh, that's part of what Act 833 is, is to help students determine, um, and, and their families, determined um, where they're headed um, and what steps we might take to get there. Um, a lot, the teacher and the family have things that they can do before the IEP meeting to um, figure some of those things out. So some of those pre-IEP preparations might be um, uh, asking the student what they think they want to do or where they think they want to live, asking the family um, what kind of um, uh, plans or vision they have for their student, um, the teacher gathering information. Um, but like anything else, there's a lot of different parts um, and steps in the process. Um, there's actually seven or eight of these. I didn't count them. Um, the, um, one of those, uh, the next step after the pre-IEP preparations is the general student information. Um, include, that can include um, present levels of academic achievement and functional performance. That's part of knowing where you are right now. Um, so you can plan where you're going to go. Um, another step um, that that general student information leads to is the areas of educational need and uh, present levels of academic achievement and functional performance. Um, that leads to the areas of educational need and development of annual goals that we're going to be able to measure, to monitor, and report progress. <clears throat> Based on those goals, the team, the IEP team, selects the special education services that um, support achieving those goals and um, how that will happen in the general education curriculum and um, classroom to support accomplishing those goals. Um, the IEP um, can also address um, necessary program testing modification, um, the length and duration of services. Um, so why have that IEP team? Um, that IEP team, um, different members on the IEP team have different perspectives of things and different um, pieces of information that they can bring to the table. Um, it provides um, various views of the student, the home, the community, um, families, members, parents, um, other family members, because I go as a grandmother to my grandson's IEP meetings, and the student provide background. Um, they provide information about um, community experiences that they have, uh, about their expectations. Um, teachers, and I don't just mean when I talk about teachers or educators, um, I, you know, it could be counselors, it could be the related service providers, um, even administrators um, provide information about school expectations and the requirements at school. Um, and all of these people work together at the IEP meeting to plan a program to meet the needs of a specific students with disabilities. That's the individualized part. Um, and that meeting um, fosters, builds communication between the family and the school. Um, there are several members of an IEP team. Um, it, the IEP teams are uh, made up of all the people who have information about and work with the student. Um, they may not necessarily all be there um, 
but the vast majority of these should be there. So like the general education teachers um, uh, may not all be at the meeting unless you have questions about a specific area, but they provide input. Um, so um, the um, required members are the parents of the legal guardian. Um, in our state, a person called the officially designated representative. Um, the general education teacher, like I said, they can provide input sheets unless you have specific questions. And usually um, they come into the IEP meeting at least for a period of time, or one of them comes in for a period of time. Special education teachers, especially the one that teaches your child, because they know things about your child and how your child learns that the, um, the, if your school has um, special education teachers that are specifically the IEP um, teacher, that um, your child's special education teacher has real specific information, um, the student, um, an evaluation representative, um, and other individuals. Um, it's important to know that in this list, no one member is more important than the other members. The parents an equal partner in the IEP team decision making, um, just like everybody else. Um, and let's see, what else do you need to know? The officially designated representative is qualified to provide um, uh, and say that they, you know, the school system can provide the specially designed instruction um, and they're supposed to know about the general education cu curriculum as well as the school's resources. Um, see what else do you need to know about the um, IEP team members um, you know the student I hear strange things sometimes I hear people say that they don't attend until junior high or high school or um, that um, or that they can't attend or um, until after third grade or just different things sometimes um, in our state in Louisiana, we have bulletins that basically um, are the law around special education. And Bulletin 1530, and I'm going to read this, um, specifically states the student should be given the opportunity to participate in the development of the IEP. In many cases, the student will be responsible for the goals and objectives. Um, some Special education teachers um, get student input on paper um, or they do a, um, like a survey. Um, but I've been to lots of IEP meetings where the student is actually present. Um, and, and the other people, a lot of times that's how somebody will um, bring their um, private counselor or their private um, service provider, or even somebody like me, um, that um, the the local school education agency that um, is supposed to um, give parents something called prior notice, which tells them um, who is coming to the meeting. And by the same token, the parents should let them uh, uh, the school system know if they're bringing someone. Um, uh, just to foster the communication. So um, th the students have to be given an opportunity to participate in the development. Um, uh, you know, the teacher will work with your um, student to know what's going on and to be an IEP team member or should and you should have that conversation with them too, um, so that they have something to say, even if they just come for five minutes. So everybody gets to meet everybody and have, uh, your student has something to, to say. Um, 
So why have the IEP meeting? Um, this is to sort of provide the rationale for it. Um, an IEP meeting is a team. Um, team members bring different types of information about the student. Um, and teams look, team, individual team members look at the data during IEP meetings from different perspectives. Um, a good decision, a good IEP comes from um, having that communication, that conversation, that consensus among those pers perspectives to come up with a um, plan, a decision. Um, when you use data to make those decisions, you can look at it over time and um, evaluate um, whether it's working or not. Um, and then that team meeting um, creates buy-in for everybody to work the plan, to work the program. Um, it's a process that leads to ultimately to successful outcomes. That's why this process was developed into law. Um, it's not supposed to be a form for us to fill out. It's not supposed to be like a fill in the blank kind of thing. Um, the IEP team has important responsibilities to um, thoughtfully consider um, educational and functional outcomes, short and long term. Um, it's, it's supposed to be a process. The document is a product that um, results in meaningful, um, from meaningful discussion and using meaningful information. Um, it's, yes, it's a one year plan to focus on the goals. Um, it's supposed to be reasonably calculated to result in educational benefit for that student um, and looking towards ultimate outcomes, whether that's college, whether that's independent living, whether that's a career, um, the outcomes that the student is looking forward to. Um, it's all about the conversation, um, the communication between the family and school. Um, coming together in the meeting provides an opportunity for everyone to build, uh, build that shared picture and that roadmap. Um, the, which, that roadmap gives everybody a um, single focused on destination, one that everybody can work on and it might change, but um, we all know where we're heading. Um, Certain things have to get written on the document, but the conversation that occurs, the um, give and take is critical for um, the shared meaning and the shared understanding and the shared focus. Um, oops, I went the wrong way. So the Act 833 decision-making uh, 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 impacts IEP team decisions more and more as um, the student goes along in their um, uh, pathway through school. Um, it helps the student pl uh, plan for the future. Um, Post-school outcomes, college, where we're gonna live, independent living, skills for those things, um, careers um, are built many years before, leading up to leaving school. Um, Act 833, and you can call our office if you need to talk more about Act 833, but it emphasizes the importance of planning for the future throughout the student's school career. Um, it ensures the individualized program supports your student towards successful educational outcomes like graduation, college career, independent living, dreams, um, it's a way of managing and evaluating progress towards those goals. Um, it's a way to use data 
thoughtfully to evaluate their pro uh, progress and to make um, adjustments. <clears throat> so, um, places that you might use Act 833, um, even though we're not going to cover Act 833 in and of itself, um, you um, might consider it in the junior, uh, general student information. The general student information has things like um, the strengths, the parents' concern, evaluation and reevaluation results, um, academic developmental functional needs, statewide assessments, progress or lack of progress in the general curriculum. Um, the students' needs and future after high school are part of the conversation. Um, so, um, a quality IEP. There are certain um, assumptions underlying a good IEP. The IEPs are individualized to provide the student with an education to the greatest extent possible. Um, um, to address the general education curriculum in the general education um, classroom. Um, for what I'm talking about, good is equal to effective and high quality. Um, that specific term, educational benefit, uh, benefit appears in case law and re relates to the student um, advancing towards attaining the annual goals and to be involved in and making progress in the general education um, curriculum. Um, other things um, in a good IEP, um, you know, you need somebody on that team, that general education uh, teacher that's going to know about the curriculum um, and be able to help with the discussion. Um, about instructional content or IEP goals. Um, instruction, effective instructional practice is critical to understanding what we can do in a year um, as and determining the services, direct and indirect. It'll help the student get to that end of the year and have achieved those goals. Um, and, and ultimately, we're talking about student learning. Um, what the student has learned is the most important result, uh, result. Um, and, and improving the student concept and, 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 uh, and improving the um, competence of the student. Um, it should be reasonably calculated to result in educational benefit. It should be con uh, connected to the state standards. Um, and uh, the team should have knowledge about the curriculum and effective instructional practices. And um, to keep remembering that it's not set in stone, that just because you have your IEP meeting in May doesn't mean you're stuck with it the entire next year, or even at the beginning of the school year, that um, the whole idea is that the student is going to learn and grow and um, change. I know I'm not doing what I thought I was going to be doing in high school. Um, I don't know many people that are. Um, so we shouldn't expect our students um, to know. We should expect them to learn and to um, uh, get closer um, and you know adjust their goals. Um, oops, I forgot to go there. Um, Evidence that the IEP is a living document, um, it should be used by everybody. So all the members of the IEP team should be using it, whether it's the related service provider, speech therapist, OT, PT, or the special ed teacher, or the regular ed teacher. An IEP isn't just written for the special ed teacher. Um, and they, they should, they, they, all the teachers, should use it to inform their instruction and to be able to measure the student's progress. Um, 
there's a whole workshop called an IEP boot camp where we talk about um, the information that parents get um, uh, and should be reviewing. Um, so there's routine times. Um, there's other times, but there's real routine times that um, there's information for a review. So it could be the report card. It could be the progress report. If you have a child in special or receiving special education services, no matter how old they are, you should be getting progress reports at least as often as you get IEPs. Um, and other things that parents are getting, not enough time, I'm already going over time, not enough time to talk about them right now. But um, it allows the educators and the families to know when we need to adjust things, we need to um, change things a little bit, um, either because they're learning everything so fast or because they're not learning things as fast as we um, thought that they were going to learn them. Um, and because it's a living document, we can change it. Um, you might need to amend it. Um, you know, the first eight weeks into the school or the seven, eight, second eight weeks into school um, because they're progressing faster or because progress in one area is faster or because they're progressing slower or one area is slower. Um, the IEP team reflects and evaluates the program, the strategies, um, the settings, um, other data um, to decide how to ch change things to meet that student's needs. Um, an IEP meeting is different than a parent-teacher conference. Um, when the parent and the school system agree not to convene a formal meeting to make um, changes, um, uh, an amendment or a modification can be made, um, but you remember that's not quite the same thing as an IEP meeting. Um, and I think we talked about what we were going to, uh, what you should do before the meeting. Um, so, when you're preparing for a meeting, oops, when you're preparing for the meeting, you want to look at your child or at the student's routine activities in his or her life, um, like maybe how they get ready to start the day. Um, most people have routines that they follow, but they don't even really think about it. Um, but when we do some preparation, things go more smoothly. Um, so we think about meetings like the IEP meeting as routine, but in reality, each one is unique and different. Um, when you take the time to prepare for the meeting, um, the preparation routine might be different, um, but some pretty specific things will be done. Um, so um, I'm not going to go through everything that's going to be done, but maybe some um, important things like timelines. Um, uh, for the IEP meeting, the student has already been determined to have a disability and in need of special education services, um, but they shouldn't be waiting for extended times for an IEP to be, it be developed. Um, the school system is doing their level best to communicate with you. They're sending prior written notice. They're calling you. Sometimes they're um, doing several things to schedule that IEP meeting um, and to tell you about the purpose of the meeting and who's expected to be there. So when parents call me, I'll say, do you have your prior notice? Who's going to be there? because knowing who's going to be there is going to allow me or one of the educational specialists to have a um, significant discussion with you about what's going on and why. Um, all discussions during the IEP meeting are confidential. There's a law called PERPA about those things being confidential and that the information is supposed to remain among the team members. Um, 
And it's about respect and trust. Um, each member is important. The general educator, uh, educators bring information um, about general curriculum and expectations that the rest of the team may, members may not know. Um, the ones teaching, the general education teachers teaching your child um, bring information about um, the student's performance and progress that nobody else has. Special education teachers are so talented and knowledgeable about how to use special specialized instructional strategies to support learning and bring a deep knowledge of the student's needs for accommodations and modifications. Um, parents and the student have special knowledge of his interactions in multiple settings, um, in the community, maybe at churches, with friends, with other adults. Um, everybody should be taking special measures to make sure that everybody understands and actively participates in the discussions and the decision making. Um, that the connection among team, team members uh, is one of the most important considerations, uh, especially when you're looking at Act 833, because there's so much about what they're gonna do after school. Um, so hopefully I've answered your questions about why the team is important, members of the team, um, important members of the team and what they bring. Um, but there's so many other resources, so many other things that you could look at. So like we have workshops on a regular basis. Um, we're having webinars now with COVID-19 on a regular basis. Um, the bulletin that governs the IEP process, I think I mentioned once before, is Bulletin 1530. It is on the Louisiana Believes website. Um, if you can't find it, contact me, Wallace Barrel. One of us can help you find it. Um, but it has oodles and oodles of information. Um, there are other bulletins. So there's a bulletin about evaluations. There's, there, the, the, there's all kinds of things that you can be studying. We also have a lending library. Um, if you wanted to ha check out a book on a specific disability, um, ask us. Uh, we can mail you a book and we can um, mail you a mailer to mail it back to us. Um, we're, you know, you need to keep my book longer than two weeks. Call and let us know. As long as nobody's waiting, that's great. I want my book back eventually. But um, uh, we have resources, how to write goals. Um, uh, we have probably things that I can't even think of right now. And then call us. Um, any one of the three of us are um, willing to provide specific information uh, uh, or information specific to your situation or to your student's situation. Um, do we have any questions, Wallace? A question that I, I would like to ask is, how do you get an IEP if you don't have an IEP? So someone makes a referral to an entity in the school system called Pupil Appraisal. Um, and, and there's a couple of three different ways to make that referral. The teacher can do it, the parent can do it. Uh, uh, some, uh, I say teacher, an educator can do it. Someone in the school system can do it. The parent can do it. And, and there's a process that go through and there's even a bulletin that goes along with that process. Um, I, depending on the situation, um, you probably want to call one of the people in our office um, to provide individual help. Um, I'm gonna also going to, this is part of a series of workshops um, that I'm putting together. So I'm also going to cover that more in the next part of the series. 
that I am currently working on. Um, so, um, you know, keep an eye out for that. Okay, great. That, yeah. And um, another one is if you had to uh, leave a tip, what tip would you leave on how to have an accessible IEP meeting? How to have a successful one? Yeah, if you had any tips so, to share, what would you share? So I always liked, personally, I always like to review the IEP from last year. Um, that way, um, I had an idea of whether um, my girls had um, achieved the goals, hadn't achieved the goals, um, whether we needed to work on it some more, or whether we needed to figure out a different way to um, uh, use or access a certain skill. Uh, you know, I always pick on counting change. Um, we counted change for several years before I finally said enough. Um, does she have enough dollar bills? Um, Cause um, I don't count my change. I throw it in a jar and I go and dump it in a machine and the machine gives me dollar bills. You know? um, so at some point, we um, adjusted that um, uh, specific task that we had been working on majorly. Not that it wasn't useful while we were doing it, but um, she didn't need to be working on change in high school. We needed to be looking at job skills, at people skills. Um, so that's probably my biggest tip is to review the one that you did last year. Um, and if you've been working on the same thing for two or three years, um, thinking about some other way to accomplish it, or um, if, you know, that's the, the most important thing to be working on at the, um, at the point that you're at. Um, Another question is, I've heard of the term draft IEP. What is a draft IEP and do you recommend getting one? Um, so um, one of the things that I um, tell parents is that um, you can request a draft copy of the IEP meeting um, before the IEP. You know, sometimes there's a whole lot of information coming at you at once, and um, I only process information so fast. If I get a draft copy, and say my husband can't be at the meeting, we can look at it before the meeting, um, talk about it before the meeting, or maybe it's the counselor that um, I wanna go over um, the draft IEP because um, you know they, they, they can't be at the meeting or they typically don't go to meetings, um, IEP meetings, um, you know, a private counselor. Um, a, a draft IEP gives us all time to have thoroughly considered things before the IEP meeting and corrected things if we need to. You know, if they say that um, he can't count to five, and I know for a fact he can count to five, well, then maybe we want to expand that and we can have had that discussion before the actual day of the IEP meeting. Um, uh, I'm, it's so important to me to get a draft IEP at times that if I, they can't have the draft IEP meeting ready before the IEP date, we'll reschedule the IEP. Um, just because I need time to process everything. So, um, you know, I recommend that to parents at times, um, especially parents that have other things, uh, other people in their child circle of support that they want to consult um, that won't necessarily be able to be there that day. And I, I know the IEP process can be overwhelming for parents and grandparents. So I know they, there are people out there that often ask this question, how do you get help with an IEP? Where do you turn? Who do you go to when you know it, you need more information and help with an IEP? Um, families Helping Families is one of the um, places I turned to before I ever went to, came to work here. 
um, or started work here, well, way too many years ago. Um, that's where I found other parents and individuals, adults with disabilities that knew about this special education thing and how it worked. Um, and now I get to be one of the ones um, helping other parents. Um, but that's probably one of the first places that I tell people about. Um, and then depending on their needs, there's other places that any one of us can recommend as we go along. And there's families helping families in every part of the state. Louisiana is rather unique in that we have um, families helping families in every, well, except, well, no, even, even the New Orleans area now it has two separate um, families helping family centers. We have a families helping family center in every um, LDH, Louisiana Department of Health um, region. So there's 10 of us. And so all of those are great questions. If anyone else has a question, now's the time to put it in the chat box and ask it. Um, does anybody have another question to ask? I, I know this was uh, great information on why I have an IEP meeting. Um, I know that sometimes it's necessary to have more than one IEP per year. Uh, I know we're, that they're entitled to have one, but sometimes things just come up and it is a good idea to have, call an IEP meeting when things get difficult and you can't get it worked out. Um, so uh, I'd like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Um, thank you for joining us. And I'd like to thank Melinda Elliott, our presenter for this webinar. Uh, please remember to complete our survey at the close of the webinar. Uh, one last time, does anybody have any questions for our chat box? Okay, I see no questions coming in. Thank you everyone for attending the Families Help Families Why Have IEP Meeting webinar. Thank you very much for attending. Bye-bye.